one thing that you highlighted was that everyone sees the success. Everyone mm. will see the end result. Oh, mashallah, this person's a doctor. This person's achieved this. But they don't know the struggles in between. Um, so tell us a bit about your struggles. Uh, how many rejections did you face initially? Let's, um, let's find out. So in life or <laughs> in oh, let's, let's, start, let's start with <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> let's start with medical school. Categorize them. Yeah. Um, so to get into medical school, I actually... Yeah, I got four rejections to start off with. Four rejections. It was actually worse because there were three rejections and one waiting list. So the okay. waiting list, I had to wait until results day. And yeah. I was really happy with my results. But then I just phoned them. They were like, oh, it's a rejection, by the way. So, so this um, is what? Like four different universities? Yeah, four different universities. Wow. And how did you take that initially? I think I think if we go backwards, mm. um, Allah made things very easy for me, different mm. times of my life. And I think it was probably developing maybe an arrogant person, someone who was overly confident. Mm. And um, even when I speak to my friends, because I'm still quite close to some of my friends that I've known yeah. since I was maybe 11 years old. So who were through with me through that journey. And you see that if I hadn't had those rejections, maybe I would have been a very different person today. Okay. So even <clears throat> when I was at school, I was meant to... I was. I thought I was going to get into the top universities like Oxford, Cambridge, yeah. and I thought it'd be an easy path for me. So even when I applied, I applied very confidently. I didn't even look at anywhere else. I thought I'd go to one, two, or three, and it's difficult at the time because I think some of the rejections came through at the same time. So I remember one day I just got two emails: one at nine o'clock, one at eleven o'clock. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, another one, another one, but. Um, I think at the time it was just, it really humbled me because it just showed me that I could think I was anything in the world and mm. the people will think you're anything in the world, but mm. what really depends is what Allah has written for you and you don't have control over that. And mm. also you might think you're as special as you are or as clever as you are or whatever else it is, but there's always someone better because mm. the reason I didn't get into it was because there was someone better than me yeah. and it humbles you again and again. And if I didn't learn that lesson then, I probably would have, struggled a lot more later on when I had to learn that lesson yeah and it's the same in deen isn't it because yeah. what they say is you you learn one one part of fiqh and you think you're the expert but then you learn the next yeah. part and the next part and the next part and they say it's the same thing where it yeah. just humbles you all the time yeah yeah and it's it's it's, it's amazing because you know like you said like you you learned a lesson from mm. that um and that's basically what we're supposed to do in, in life yeah. when there's a difficulty or hardship we always supposed to look at the the positive of it, yeah. uh, because you know it's like the verse in the Quran where you think something is really good for you, but actually it's not. Yeah. Or sometimes you think something is actually bad, but Allah knows that there's there's khayr in it, mm -hmm. um, and that's just life. Like that summarizes life for us. Yeah. Whereas like things happen in life, we think are oh, you know Allah's not, He's not listening to my mm. prayers or something. But actually there's there's some good at the end of it.